My dad was a strong personality. We had a strong father and son love for each other, but growing up for me in large part was proving my independence from him. He wanted me to study at Columbia University, and I got a scholarship there, but I went to Ohio instead. He wanted me to be a journalist like he was, and I fought it nobly for many years, but there are things in life that you just cannot fight. I am very much the son of my father, and journalism, it was to be. These are the back streets of Hamburg's red light district, a rough place to grow up. My alternative service was youth work. My job was to get these kids off the streets and into boats where they felt like pirates. And to didn't notice they were learning social behavior. This film, by the way, was shot by Julia Reichert, who later won an Academy Award for her own films. Verehrte Hörer, die letzten 25 Minuten unseres heutigen Programms werden von einem Gast aus den USA bestritten. Er heißt Jay Tuck und war fünf Jahre lang Disc-Jockey bei einem Funkhaus in Ohio. Ah, das ist der richtige Knopf. Es geht gut los, ja. NDR Radio actually named the show after me. Oh yeah, guten Abend. My name is Jay Tuck und Sie hören meine erste Sendung und hoffentlich nicht meine letzte. It was on air for three years with my own fan club and free beer at the legendary music club Uncle Pur. Wenn Sie jedoch nur rumflippen wollen, sind Sie hier ganz richtig. Flip, 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 flip. The radio exposure brought well-paying announcing jobs. Der Mythos des amerikanischen Westens. Marlboro Classics. Resistance is futile. Breakthrough. Killer bees. Coming soon. During my youth work, I met a struggling, long-haired rock band called Nectar. We shot this little film together in Hamburg. At the time, they dreamed of being rock stars. And I dreamed of a career as a television producer. Both dreams came true. Nectar sold gold records and toured the world. I worked full-time at television. Later, we filmed this together. I got my start at television because I was kind of an oddball. Television people like oddballs, so they gave me a chance. As a freelancer, I covered the celebrities. Hey there, people, I'm Bobby Brown. I fell in Suzanne takes you down to her place near the river. Let me take you by the hand and lead you through the streets of London. Rentnerband 
Seit 20 Jahren Dixieland. Ein Gruppi haben die auch, die heißt Rosa oder so. Und die tanzt auf dem Tisch. My favorite celebrity story was the visit of American pop artist Andy Warhol. My mother had once told me that a scribble on a napkin could be worth thousands if it came from Picasso. I wanted to try my luck with Warhol. I knew the press conference would be a screening match, so I made my own plans. I told the production manager at NDR I would need a chauffeur to limousine and three assistants with red caps. He wondered why, but I got my limo. When Warhol arrived at the Hamburg airport, we were ready. His entourage was greeted at every turn by a smiling young man with a red cap. This way to the limousine, Mr. Warhol. This way. Obediently, he followed instructions, stepping into the limo where I waited. What do you think of the values uh, and of the mechanisms and of the norms that have made your success possible? Do you accept these values? What do you mean? I mean the values and norms and uh, mechanisms that make it possible to, uh, to earn that much money with one, with one painting. Well, it's, uh, gee, I, I, I do not. I mean, a lot of people, I'll put it another way, a lot of people who don't know much about art are very outraged that someone can earn that much money that quickly. Uh, How do you react to that? Oh, but it's not that easy. I mean, we, we, I have an office of about 35 people working. I mean, you know, we have a magazine and we have a video cable TV show and we'll do the top two. That's wonderful. Of course, I had him sign a few soup cans. The production manager later said the soup cans belonged to the television station, the value created while on NDR assignment. But I had supermarket receipts. My ownership went unchallenged. I did a lot of silly stuff back then, spoofs and satires, rock stars and art shows. A lot of it didn't match. We were on the slimmest vorbereitet, doch die Warnungen der Norddeutschen. It was my own personal search for a professional identity. I reported for Freitags Magazine and Hamburg Journal on local television. As my German improved, my reporting moved from local to network television. The subjects began to get serious.